Hey folks, it's time for yet another custom lesson. This one has been requested by Lucas Creighton. Sorry if I butchered your name. I'm just gonna keep apologizing because that's all I can do. In any case, they requested fists with sword. Cores are whatever I want them to be. And then only guardian spirit I had to work with was Ho'o and then the secondary spirit is up to me. So what did I do? Before I go any further, I am using a Demon Horde Katana because I really like this anima bonus on grapple. I wanted to have a lot of anima generation because the overall setup that I'm using is fairly expensive, but it's pretty fun. Other than that, my claws are fairly standard. So enough about that, let's get on to the Guardian Spirits and the choices I made. So you may notice right away, what the heck, White Tiger? Yeah, that's right. White Tiger is a soul core that is widely misunderstood, even by myself. It took me a long time to really learn when the best moment to use this is. And to put it simply, it is best to use as a long range engage. It, that usually deals with all the weaknesses that it has. Um, there are a couple things that are annoying with it, but it is actually not too bad when you're dealing with multiple enemies and you can hit them. So, but you gotta be really far away. You don't wanna be up close with it, but I'll talk more about how to use it a bit later. Um, as for the soul core stats itself, I would advise getting this up to rank 30. Reason being, the lock stats are really good. Not like the best, but they're pretty good. Purity accumulation is nice, so if you're running a purity based build, you definitely want this up, especially if you're using ho -Oh, you have more purity accumulation, what's not to love. Also, the first time you inflict purity on an enemy, you'll get a good chunk of anima back, and so it can be really valuable if this is ranked really high. So boost this up as much as you can. Really good for that purpose. So yeah, White Tiger, definitely a weird choice, right? And then speaking of other weird choices, I went with Ancient Neo Tengu. Yeah, strange, huh? So I've used Ancient Neo Tengu before, and I have said that, hey, it works really well against blocking opponents, but I believe the time I showcased this was mostly against Yokai. So this time I wanted to really show how powerful it is against human opponents, which you will see, I fight some of the craziest human opponents that I'm sure, yeah, <laughs> you'll just see who I fight. It's pretty crazy. When it comes to soul core rank, I do recommend that you boost this again for another anima based bonus. The more you have, the better. You can't go wrong with that. And it's pretty straightforward to boost it. Also, if you're a fan of the Tengu's fan, that sounded weird. <laughs> but if you're a fan of the Tengu's fan, um, which basically is like a little tornado, I'll showcase what it looks like. Then yeah, you can spam that and use that as an additional item in your toolkit. And so this can be a lot of fun to work with. But yeah, this is a really powerful core and doesn't do the most damage, but is phenomenal at doing break. And it is really, really good if you can have all three of them land on a target, which they generally do. Really powerful core. Highly recommend you use it if you hate blocking opponents. Next up, I decided to go with something a little different. Lesser Umibozu. So I wanted a quick cancel core and I've used cores like Aberrant all the time. So I haven't really given any time to Lesser Umibozu and it's awesome it also has another anima bonus i would advise ranking this up water damage is okay i guess but this soul core is actually one of the fastest in the game this tooltip does not do it justice and i'll show you how spammable it is so i've actually used it twice on accident without realizing it it is really really good well let's get on to the secondary garden spirit i brought back oh why i guess just for the purity theme and because they share anima charge strong attack so i wanted that now when it comes to the soul cores, uh, I went back to Karaoke because Karaoke is a lot of fun, especially on Brute, so I really want to highlight that. The only stat I really was interested in was the Yokai ability Key Pulse, and you may notice the soul core rank. Honestly, I was just testing the limits of this, and uh, it's really not worthwhile uh, to like spend too much on it. You don't really have to worry about it. I think it's default like 1.1, and then at rank it's 1.9, and then at rank 30 it's at like 1.5 or something. But if you are attached to these stats, by all means go for it. Kiryoki is a very, very powerful core, very fast, and I'll showcase more about it a bit later, but it is a solid core uh, to use. Next up, Ryomen Sukuna makes a return. I have used this before, and the reason for this was because I wanted access to Confusion, specifically on a Purity Guardian Spirit. So yeah, I went with Ryomen. I know I have put Ryomen on hold before, but it's really cool, and this is one of the very, if not the only... Uh, soul cores that actually has two locked anima bonuses and for sure you're going to want to boost this to 30 especially if you confuse enemies which you will with Ryoman and if you use Onryo magic at all you get a huge bonus this is like one of the best lock stats period so it definitely boosts this up to 30 but this is a massive power play there's a bit of a startup time 
and it can inflict confusion and do a whole lot of powerful stuff. It is really, really, really good. So I'll talk more about that later. Next, to assist me with anima generation and because I wanted a good gap closer, I decided to pick Underworld Soldier yet again. It was between this and Namahage, but I decided, hey, I'll use Underworld Soldier because I really want to punish some human opponents. For some reason, I just wanted to beat up human opponents this time around. So this is one to get to rank 30. Every grapple gets boosted with anima by 3.3. Super, super awesome. This has the okay ability to keep pulse, and that's really all I cared for. This animation is pretty neat. Um, there's actually two ways you can activate it. So if it doesn't perform this grapple, there's actually a secondary animation that it has, which in all honesty sometimes can be what you might prefer. But yeah, uh, this is uh, definitely a pretty wonky setup. So let's just get right into some of the information. So White Tiger, very long animation, incredible range. All right, if you, it's hard to tell. You wanna see the range? Right. Oh, okay, that's a little loud. Okay, let's get the beam. All right, look at that range. All right, I'm, I'm in the beam. I, I, my camera actually won't let me go. That is huge. So you need to play to that strength. If you use this soul core at large range, it works much, much better than if you're at close range. Otherwise, at close range, it's pretty awful to use. But at super long range, when targets are really far away and you just want to start hitting them with purity from the get-go, White Tiger is pretty good for that. But other than that, long animation and high commitment. The response time, um, let me get that out, actually the controller. Uh, response time is basically really not that important for this because you are committed to such a huge animation and while the response time um, isn't necessarily that slow, it's still annoying. In case you don't know what response time is, it's basically the soonest my character will block after using a yokai ability. This basically means I am free to do stuff right afterwards. So let me showcase this with Ancient Neo Tengu. Here's the animation. Response time is remarkably quick. So you summon it and then you can attack as you see fit. And so you can combo a lot with Ancient Neo Tengu. It is ridiculous. But now let's talk about Lesser Umi Bozu. All right, here's the animation, right? Looks like it has a lot of downtime, but let me actually show you with input buffering and the response time stuff how good it can be. It, why is it quiet? That's so awkward. Wait, there's no sound? Anyway, the response time to this is remarkably fast, all right? You can actually spam it. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that spam. Look how fast you can spam it. All you got to do is just move. So that's that's a way that I've accidentally spent a little bit more anima than I realized. But Umibozu is pretty decent for water applications, and as you can see, you you leave a little bit of a water pool, which can help. But really, it's silent. That is so weird. Okay. In any case, let's get on to these. Of course, so Ryoman. It actually has a remarkably quick response time. You can sort of control the direction, not too much. You're basically going to propel forward, but you can basically do an action before the animation finishes. So as the Beyblade stops, so the moment when it looks like Ryoman stands still, so let me showcase that again. All right, so where are we at? And it looks like it plants its feet. See how it's kind of planting its feet right there? And then it starts to evaporate. Around that time is when you can do an attack. So let me showcase that again. Pretty cool, huh? So it can be a seamless transition between plays. Underworld Soldier, by default, will do this. Overall, a long animation, decently quick response time. It works two ways against opponents. I'll showcase that in a moment. Um, but the response time overall, irrespective of which version you use, is pretty good. But this ability is liable to miss sometimes. So you need to make sure you plan it a little bit. Last but not least, we have Kiryoki, super fast. Fast animation, and you can see it. the animation itself is active for a while, and I can still do stuff, so you can crazily combo with it. Let me showcase Underworld Soldier, the default animation you can expect on human opponents. All right, so you'll do this, and then look, the camera is gonna pan, and I can still do stuff. All right, it can be pretty awesome. Let's showcase it again. All right, let's see how soon I can set up, say, Severing Spin. So you can even do it before the camera returns back to normal, which is super awesome. But be warned, 
If you don't, oh, I was <laughs> this actually was working too well. If you it can if you miss with it, which I'm not, <laughs> I'm a uh, I'm failing at failing, guys. But it can be if you miss with it, it can feel really bad because you'll have that super long. I didn't fail with it. Okay. But if you miss with it, sometimes you can overshoot targets and it can feel pretty bad. But let me show the other animation that'll play, say, on, home, on opponents you cannot grapple. Which is that, with still a reasonably quick response time. And so you can use this as a pretty good gap closer. I would advise using this at range, as I said, as a gap closer. And then it's not too shabby. Alrighty. Let's go. Dead. Awesome. So, alright. Now, let me talk about White Tiger. Actually, I'll just show you White Tiger. You do not want to use White Tiger at closed range. Like, at all. Like I said, it has an incredible amount of range. And you need to play to that strength. So, my advice is when you got, like, a bunch of opponents, don't use White Tiger right here. Don't use it right there. You're gonna get hit. Do it from, like, really freaking far away. See, here I'm gonna get hit. Feels bad. But you saw those other targets that kind of had to stay in place. Also, one thing of note, White Tiger pays attention to which way you're facing. So right now I'm gonna make sure my character is facing at an awkward angle. And look what happens. So yeah, it doesn't automatically orient you towards your target, so you need to be facing it. Which, again, is one thing I dislike. But if you are facing your target, and they are far away enough, it's reasonable to use. See, like here, you can hit targets. Also of concern, elevation does matter when it comes to White Tiger. You are going to want to be level with it. Which, understandably, can be impractical from time to time. Alright, so again, you, you not only need to be level, but you gotta be far away. Which is naturally very frustrating. I see if Neotengu will break the key for me. Oh, he wasn't blocking. So yeah, you gotta plan your white tigers. And anyway, let's showcase some things you can do with Yokai Shift. And here we go. Alright, let's break some key. Okay. Very nice. Alright, so whoosh. 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 I would advise using this as long range play. Just straight up long range play with this setup. Don't don't go close range. You don't need to. Alright? So long range play. Anytime you need to reposition, stagger them, shoot them a bunch. Don't hesitate to spam these cores over and over again. Keep the range at all times, whenever you can. That is my advice for Phantom Form. Pretty much no matter what. Brute Form is going to be a little different. Um, you can be really in the thick of things with this, and so it can be a lot of fun. As such, charge this. Throw out and oh dear lord. It can be merciless. Let me show you some other things you can do. Very nice. But yeah, this is very much just up close. Really, dude? But yeah, I can have double shockwave. Charge. Throw out two shockwaves at the same time. It's really cool. So there's a lot of thematic close range things you can do with this. Kinda neat, huh? Try it again. So it can be extra devastating. So one more time against uh, Yoki, and then we'll get to town. Here we go. Giving you some sweet, sweet ideas. Very nice. But in any case, 
How am I going to work with these weapons? So one thing that Sword and Fist share in common is that they both have the Azuna drop, which means against humans, you will be able to deplete a ton of key and keep their key quite low. You got Azuna drop here. Deplete some key here. Come on. Come on. All right. So, you'll be able to keep opponent's key quite low, especially if they're humans. So definitely play to that strength. And then you have access to quite a lot of elements. On Ho'o, you have purity and water, but on Ho'o, you have, I guess, water and fire. But with your weapons and guardian spirit stuff, it can be pretty rad. So here's some things you can do. Not bad. Not the best. But not bad either. Look at that karaoke push. Also, here's a kind of a neat combo you can do. Just a simple thing involving weapon switching. I know many of you may not like flash attacks, but here's something you can do. So let's say flash attack, brute karaoke. Super, super fast. Or you can just do brute karaoke on its own. And it can be extra awesome. So yeah, let me show that again. When you do a flash attack, do a brute attack. Once you hit with it, use karaoke. And it can be extra spicy. Alright. Go! Let's use Umi Bozu to quick cancel. Set things up. Extra dirty. It can stagger reasonably, it's not too shabby. It's just a quick little hit stun, but it's a remarkably fast core that you shouldn't underestimate whatsoever. Alright, uh, one thing I think will help you is using sheet swaps to go from fist to sword. It can be extra rad. Here we go, confuse the target. You got Opportunist, of course, helps when you're in close range. Oh boy. Get all those martial art moves going. If you have some distance, then White Tiger is a little easier to pull off, but it is ultimately a big commitment, so you gotta be careful. Oh yeah, here's something I like to do. Even if I don't switch weapons, Reverse Impact, Counter, Karaoke. Or just Reverse Impact, Counter, Underworld Soldier. Feels pretty cool. Night Rain. Uh, then use Ryomen. Oh yeah, one thing you need to know with Ryomen is don't be up close to your target when you do it. Have a little bit of range. Alright? Because sometimes, if they're a little too close, they won't get hit by the Beyblade portion of it. So make sure you pay attention. Let me see if I can showcase this with an enemy. Yeah, if you if the enemy's hitbox, if they're a bigger enemy, it's not as big of a deal. But if they're a smaller enemy, specifically many humans, and they're on the tinier side, just just like a quick little distance away, just a little distance away. You see, like the edge of the blade. See, like right out here. Basically, that's where you want to hit them. You want to hit them, you want to just be that a little distance away. So just like a quick dodge away, not, nothing too serious. That way you can get those hits. And it, then it can be extra awesome. It's kind of the same with Underworld Soldier. Um, it's nice against bigger targets because you can usually hit them. But if they're smaller, sometimes they can just like avoid it. So having a little bit of range is always good with Underworld Soldier and Ryomen. Not so much karaoke, but definitely for White Tiger and for Neo Tengu. So you do have like some moderate range cores that you should play around with. And so you got to get used to that. But you have close range weapons, really, really long range cores, a bunch of them to assist with your engages. Even Umibozu is a little bit of a range, but you can use it close range and it's still going to be pretty awesome. But yeah, you got to plan these a little bit, but not too bad. Just giving you some ideas of things you can do. And it can be quite devastating when you can mix and match all these things together to have all sorts of non-stop pressure plays. 
So let me do the whole package one time before I guess we get on to the main showcase, which I'm sure will surprise many of you. All right, this is like the closest I'd be comfortable to using White Tiger. All right, so long range play is the theme. Nope, nope. Only if when I want to go for the grapple will I go in. Try that again, continuing on with Toxic Slime stuff. There's another cool thing you can do, just all the purity. Stagger them. Get that rapid confusion proc off. Extra deadly. Nice. All right, let's go back to Brute. The Brute is close range, and you're fine with that. Oh, very nice. Let's go. Awesome. Let me pick up some Underworld Soldier stuff. Oops. That wasn't good. go here we go so yeah brute will probably be one of those really fun forms you can work with um but th this is just like really different overall all right let's just murder the guy using everything that i can and then we'll call it we'll go to the gameplay showcase all right oh ah, that's 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 bad nope nope this is bad No mercy, all right? It'll be devastating. Let's continue on from there. Here we go. Owie. Very good. Go White Tiger! Here we go! Close enough. But yeah, a lot of fun things you can work with this. In any case, I think that's enough of a showcase. So let's get on to the actual gameplay in which I'm gonna be fighting, and yes, this is for real, I'm gonna be fighting Kukai. Purple Kukai, so... I will see you guys in a bit. Alright, scroll the damned involving Kukai. It's gonna get pretty kooky. Haha. -ha. Any case, let's start off with this guy. Opportunist, his quick draw, which is always solid. This scroll I find to be fairly irritating, not so much because you have human enemies that block nonstop, because you have chumps like this one who love to shoot you and hit you and interrupt your flow. But Ryo and Sokuna took quick work, or made quick work of them. Izuna drop, very nice. Let's keep that key low, reverse impact, brute, Kiryoki, sweet. Look at that, key is gone. I am using my grapples in brute form because I have so much anima gain courtesy of things like Underworld Soldier's anima bonus. But right, let's just kill this guy. I got that skeleton warrior and I'm just, I'm so hell bent on dealing with this guy. But now, guess what? There are three total enemies. And so what you may notice is that it seems to be I'm creating distance, right? This is a good moment for me to use White Tiger. Not the best one, but I was able to deal with two of the other enemies at the same time. And here's another good moment to do White Tiger. They're all really far away to sweep the entire region. And so that's what White Tiger can be good for. As well as some reasonable purity accumulation against your target. And yeah, let's just take these guys out. Standard to play, nothing too crazy. Kiryoki makes quick work of it. Now the next enemy we have is Inatara, and she's really irritating, not because she does any crazy attacks, but because all she does is block. Which is where soul cores like Ancient Neo Tengu shine. Thank you, Battering Ram. And so my objective is to inflict non-stop pressure, but look, she's just blocking. She's just blocking. And so I'm like, all right, fine, try to attack. Maybe I can parry you and make keep things from there. But it's just kind of awkward. I'm not able to get the parries off. It takes me a little bit, just like not used to dealing with her. 
All right, am I gonna get a parry off? Yes, there we go. Back wave, Tempest, final blow. Very nice. All right, but block, look at that. Just block, 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 D block. And just more block. And then Azuna drop it. In brute form, get that sweet anima back so I can use all sorts of different soul cores. And then here we go. Kiryoki helps quite a bit. And again, Kiryoki isn't the best when an opponent's blocking, which makes this annoying. I use real men because I got that other guy to deal with. So I'm just like, you know what? Well, let's just focus on taking this person off so I don't just randomly die. So target's dead. And on to this glorified revenant once again. So Underworld Soldier does help. It ignores the blocking aspect for many human opponents. And so I use that to my advantage for a quick draw and a stab. But it's not over. Next up is a Skeleton Warrior, which isn't really that bad. It's just Skeleton Warrior. I mean, <laughs> it, all by itself, it doesn't really pose a threat. You just got to make sure to pay attention. I use the Umibozu Soul Core to inflict water, get that damage. Now I've got Confusion activated. Messed up a second part of Opportunist, but not to worry. The target's dead, so no big deal. This is one that's annoying, though. Akechi Mitsuhide. So what does he do that I hate the most about? Well, aside from him being a glorified human revenant, he casts Sloth, and it lasts for a while. So my objective is to make sure he can do a grand total of zero things. And remember what I was talking about staying at range? I actually don't stay at range here. I do fire the Umibozu a lot, but I don't stay at range, and as a result, my Yokai Shift is going to end a little prematurely, which is unfortunate. Having the fire debuff does hurt quite a lot. You can see that it's rapidly depleting, but even with that being subpar, I've made sure he doesn't cast Sloth on me and that his key is very low. And that is, you know, that's a win, all things considered. Um, I forget what I was trying to do here, but I'm just like, you know what, whatever. Reckless Charge, Kiriyoki, make sure your key is low. Make sure you can't do anything just over and over and over again. I don't want you to cast Sloth because that really sucks. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Other than that, he does have some cool jutsu, but honestly, the sloth is the thing that irritates me the most, and I just don't want to deal with that. And so now he's dead, but it's not over, because we're dealing with purple Kukai. Oh boy, here we go. Misfired white tiger. Yeah, this is in a case you do not want to use it. And not so much the enemy, but just my positioning. And that's when White Tiger won't feel as good. But fortunately, with cores like Ancient Neo Tengu, I depleted a huge amount of key because he blocks. And that is really good. But other than that, I need to make sure to keep his key very low. You will see me use a couple of Hyper Armor moves, if you didn't know, moves like Reckless Charge and uh, Swords Flowing Shadow do have a reasonable amount of Hyper Armor, so they can really help you when he does attacks, which have that Hyper Armor property, such as Shockstopper. But here you go. Like I've said, just keeping his key as low as I can, especially for the purple version of Kukai, it's extra important. I'm using the Brute Form to combo as much as I can and keep that Anima bonus going. And then here I apply Confusion, except he's in now in Phase 2 which means he purifies all debuffs, which feels so bad since I had worked to inflict that confusion upon him. So now I'm just doing straight up damage. And here's an example of Flowing Shadow having that hyper armor, Ancient Neo Tengu coming in there really clutch to deplete his key. I mean, it's such a good ability. So again, if any enemy blocks, use Ancient Neo Tengu and it will ruin their key levels. It's so good. Awesome, keeping him at low key or as low key as possible. Misfire Neo Tengu, I was a little dependent upon that there, which is unfortunate. So make sure you're at range with it. All right, let's see what I do there. Sort of discernment, overall safe move. And then let's keep that key low, put him on the ground. Do I use Lesser Umibozu? No, I use Reckless Charge. Neo Tengu once again, look at that. Ooh, I love how that syncs up. So we're getting close to phase three, which is arguably one of the scariest things. Now, my advice in general for Kukai is to treat him more like a yokai enemy as opposed to a human. You do have some human-based elements that you can work with, but by and large, I think it's best to treat him as a yokai. Permanent hyper armor and stuff like that, uh, especially in phase three, which is coming up. So it, it just helps to change your mindset to be like, all right, this guy's got hyper armor. I'm going to work with that. And he has special abilities. So that, I think, having that sort of mindset will assist you. Also paying attention to his burst attacks, and he does have a few is very important but we're in phase three now and so the rules have changed in his favor but there are a lot of things that they've done such as make burst counters very punishing against him which can help and can make the fight a lot more interactive than otherwise thought you may have thought possible but yeah i'm still trying to zero key combo him with the key debuff on him 
it can be very helpful. And then I'm using Underworld Soldier to give me a little breathing room and deplete his key. And look at that, keeping that key low. Uh, Reelman is not really working, so this is very difficult. But you can use some parries, which I do use, which I did use from time to time. But yeah, you got to be very careful, unless you get the burst counter off. In which case, you pretty much murder him, which is great. So be on the lookout for those. Um, I would say Feral Form has probably the easiest time against him for that reason. But now I'm looking for a finisher. Severing Spin it is. Yeah, he's dead. I'm the real monk around here. <laughs> In any case, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful, and I will see you guys next time.